G'day there. Now, I'm Richard Musgrave Evans and back in Outback Australia. Today we're working with the big guns. We've got a huge clear prime Belgian linen, bucket loads of oil paint, and plenty of big pallet knives. All right, now, I haven't actually put any blocking in at all. I'm gonna wait now and do the whole thing from scratch. All right, so it's a beautiful outback mountain and obviously a lot of red clay pan dirt in the foreground. So that's what the picture's about. Let's get into it. Okay, now, establish where the mountain's gonna go, I would say. I might just use a bit of a wall. All right, what do we got here? Let's clean up some of this because I've uh, kept this palette fairly messy from a few of the other paintings I've been doing because I haven't been moving around much. I've, normally I clean the palette off each time I move, but I've been painting in the same spot for the last few days. Plenty of subject matter, so, hence all the paint still here. Okay, let's do this. I've also got to watch out I don't wear it on myself here when I lean forward, but that's all part of it. Right, where do I want the horizon line? I want the horizon line about fairly low. Bit of a bow in it. Establish where that mountain's going to go. That is Tent Hill again. Now I painted Tent Hill the other day. This time I'm going to hit. I painted the evening effect. That was last night of Tent Hill. This time I'm going to hit a big midday version. Okay. It's a particularly nice subject, so I think it deserves the attention of. big picture. Okay, so I'm just basically drawing with the knife here, getting the feeling of composition. Okay, a little bit of the mountain range over there. I'll bunk some of that in. That's about it. Now I'll just stand back and check out what I've got. Okay, now standing back immediately, I realise I'm a little bit higgledy piggledy. I actually want to go a bit more that way. You always need to stand back, particularly on a big painting, to compose it. I could see the horizon was a bit off. Now I think I've got it about how I want it. Right. What do we start with today? I'll bung a few of the shadows in. Hang on. What have we got here? A bit of a lizard and crimson that I did not put down, so I'll put some down. It's also got a leak, this one. So I'll end up wearing a fair bit of it, no doubt. There we go. Got it on the hands, just like that. Okay. Clear a spot. All that over there. Right. Lizard and crimson. I want it to be fairly red first, just a, I'll knock some uh, viridian green and yellow ochre into that. But I like the red undertone, it gives a nice powerful undertone shadow and contrasts the cooler greens that you're going to put on later. Purposely leave a little bit of red maybe showing through here and there. Just getting, I'm going over the top here with a few going over the top here with a few darks, I'm doing that on purpose because I like to put the shadows in first and then I'll go over them and leave a little bit left, so just getting the feel of it now Spectrum Blue and Magenta tiny bit of white maybe, oops I'm almost out of blue there, I'm going to have to load up the blue in a minute now, there's a nice shadow here. Because it's winter here in Australia, the shadows are actually fairly long. You can see the shadow cast by the trailer, etc. So we've got a sort of a midday effect, but pretty long shadows. So just putting those nice cool tone shadows in to help compose the picture. Keep them, keep them fairly thin. Now, just lighten off a bit with that blue. 
going to paint a few shadows. There's not that many shadows on Tent Hill itself, but there are a few remaining. So, I'm just going to put a bit of shadow in and then take most of it out and leave a tiny trace of it. Beautiful hill, beautiful hill. Great bluff on the end of it there. Just blocking in some nice shadows, like I said. Most of them will get going over, but just getting it in there. A little bit of pale blue on the range here. Right, let's stand back and have a look. Okay. okay, so that's basically the shadows in. Now, I'm pretty much out of blue. I'll just drop this in the bin. Okay, just got to open this little puppy up. Art Spectrum, beautiful stuff in tins. This one hasn't been opened yet, so bear with me. I'm just getting the lid off. Big slabs of the stuff, fantastic. The bonus is if you leave it, Get a bit of this out. Plenty of sky, so I'll keep on going. Plenty on. The bonus is with the tins, if you used, you got too much on the top outside on the uh, easel pallet, I mean, you don't have to worry because if you're quick enough and you put it back in and then bang the tin flat, it all settles and provided you use it, you know, fairly soon. Don't leave it for six months or anything. Provided you use it fairly soon, it'll stay stay wet and won't dry on you. Okay. Right, sky. Some of this sky colour from last night and also this morning. That's the colour I mixed up this morning, which is yellow ochre and uh, cobalt blue. That's right. Cobalt blue, yellow ochre. And it's a beautiful colour and it's already here, so let's get it in with that. There's some nice high level cloud in today too, so I'm about to put that in. I'll just get some of this in first. Okay, Spectrum Blue, not sorry, uh, Cobalt Blue. Yellow ochre. I'm still going with that theme at the moment. I just got to mix up with more of a brew because I just ran out of the stuff. Okay. A bit more yellow ochre. Gives the sky a slight green tinge, and uh, as you can see today, there's quite a bit of green in there. In fact, that camera is showing up more green than there actually is, but that at least shows you how it's going green up to kind of a magenta blue up there. all this in. It's a little bit like your uh, whoops, hang on. So we've got some uh, half mixed blue there which is no good not coming through underneath so I'll just go over that. It's almost like your um plastering a wall. Okay, now, more blue, 
more white, more blue, more blue. It's going to chew up this blue, I can tell you that already. It's a good workout putting the sky in. I'll just get it all in and then I'll do a bit of blending in a minute. So a bit more blue, so it gets darker as it's going up. Mix, mix, mix. It's pretty hard to make the, the sky too blue. It's a hard thing to do. The more blue, the more sunny the day. to one side, may get used, may not, and that, oh, big wad of blue, now I'm going to throw a bit of magenta in, with the blue, so we've got a clean cobalt blue and a magenta to give, kind of a red blue, plenty of it, as you can see it's quite warm and dark up there, yeah, darker than that. Yes, it eats the blue, I'll tell you that much. All that blue I just took out of the tin's pretty much gone already. Get that blob. Fun, what fun, ploughing away on a huge painting, getting stuck into it. Okay, now we just go crazy doing a bit of blending here, random strokes. blending away okay now I'll just stand back and have a look at what I got okay we're getting there now there's a lot of high level cloud going on as you can see so let's put some of that in in the bin. Okay, so today, as you can see, I've got a big chunk of white there. Absolutely going to need tons of it today with such a big painting. Okay, so I'm mixing up so far burnt sienna and white. Really good colour for the lower tones. Let's have a look at that. Mm. A bit more yellow ochre in that one, I reckon. Just adjust as you go. Okay, let's have a look what we got. Yeah. level cloud is very soft. So 
half mixing it all in for now. I'll blend it a little bit better soon, but as a matter of fact, I'll get the, uh, the big guns out. Now we're talking, we are talking. This is painting with style. Get into it. High level cloud. Smearing technique, let's have a look at that. Starting to come together, all right. Smear that. As much fun as that big knife was, for now, it's going to get back into this little one. You can call that little one. Oops, that's serene. So they've got a bit of green mixed in them with that. Uh, Yellow ochre and burnt sienna, which I didn't want, so I got rid of that. Slightly touch, pull some yellow ochre through. Yeah, just throwing a little bit of magenta in the works and trying to just actually knock it back a little bit as it gets down near the horizon, kill it off its head. I even throw a bit of that blue in now. So it's sort of a, yeah, it needs a bit more of that magenta red in it. It's knocking the tone back as it's getting lower. It's getting weaker, a weaker color because there's more atmosphere getting mixed up in the works. So in that mix, I've thrown in magenta and a bit of blue to send it more of a grayish kind of high level cloud color. Just knocked it off a bit but it's necessary to make it recede down into the distance there. And I'll stick it down here too. Okay, that'll do with the sky. For now that'll do with the sky. Let's get into the biggest differences. Right. I'm actually loving I'm liking the colour of that hill. I'll just alter that hill a little bit. What have we got? A bit of magenta in this sky mix that I was doing and a bit of burnt sienna, a bit of white. A bit of that sky blue thrown in because it's obviously too purple. There is a slight purple tinge about the actual hill itself. Because it's received off in the distance, there's a little bit of a purple tinge. You don't want to go overboard. That's the beauty about painting on site. You can see those subtle colours, but you also tend not to go overboard on site. At home, if you're working from a photo, you may over-exaggerate and then it looks a bit put. But here, it's a lot easier to analyse what you're doing. Now, I can straight away see that that was too strong for a midday effect, so I've knocked it back with a bit of burnt sienna and white. It's very lightly touched. Purposely leaving, leaving bits of raw linen showing through and also perfect, purposely leaving that undertone blue a little bit because that also looks a bit like the, uh, the trees on the hill there. You can see these tiny trees on the hill, kind of giving the illusion of that. 
As a matter of fact, I might elaborate on that and put a bit of this green here with that. Just slightly knock up a bit of a... See, so that's too strong. That needs to be greyed off. I'm trying to knock up a bit of that tree colour, which is actually, even though the trees are green, the trees are green, but because they're so far away, they're only just green. There's a lot of other subtle tones in them where it's not green. If you make them too green, then they don't look like trees a long way away. They just look like some weird colour you've thrown on. Okay, a bit of yellow ochre in that. So let's work our way a bit closer into the foreground. So I've got yellow ochre and burnt sienna mixed with that sky blue that I had before, which was the top sky colour. It was mixing with the yellow ochre and burnt sienna. Yeah, it's a bit more green thrown in there, a bit more blue maybe. Gentle to knock it back chromatically, grey it ever so slightly. Big more chunks of yellow ochre coming out there on the knife, which I didn't want, so I've got to knock that off. Better. Slightly touching. Magenta, green, more magenta and green. Now it does need a bit more yellow ochre, so you've got to make it up as you go. up with this palette knife, a very light green over here with meridian green and white and now half mixed with my yellow ochre. The uh, salt bushes are quite a blue colour. Maybe not that blue, but let's have a look. A bit more yellow ochre. Bit more yellow ochre again. Okay, now. Just very light. and get some of that earthy orange tone which is obviously very obviously there. I like cat orange and magenta and white that gives a good combo. 
but I'm gonna need some more burnt sienna in, in the mix as well, I reckon. Half mix them up, get a nice swirly effect. What have we got here? Let's just have a look what I've got first. Yes, see that? Too pink. I'm gonna actually put a bit of yellow ochre in that. Adjust it as I go, that needs a bit more of a yellow look. Painting was <laughs> such a big knife. Now as I get closer to the foreground, I'm just going to key that ground down a little bit, stick some in this corner here. Kind of a greyer, darker version. One, it is a bit like that as it gets lower, but two, it keeps your eyes away from that subject and draws you into the picture. going, keep on going, keep applying paint. Get bits of those oranges in because they're there. They're all around the place. So let's get them in and then work out where we want them in a minute. Get more magenta in there as they go further back. Let's have a look up on that hill. It's kind of a Almost a pinky magenta -y orange there. Now that distant hill is quite purple. I haven't touched this one yet, I'll just lightly bung this in. Not that purple. Come on. Very lightly touched. We'll stand back and have a look. That player. Okay. What am I got here? Mix up a brew of this, a brew of that. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green. Just gonna alter the tone of that distance there a bit. Make it a bit darker through here. A big blob of paint, like a skin bit there. I'll just get that off. it off a bit there so I can add a bit more because the colour was not quite correct in the tone that I wanted. So don't hesitate to take some of the paint off sometimes and then put new stuff back on. Palette knife's good for taking stuff off. Then just introduce more paint again. All right, flies. Okay, now I've got here a bit of this colour from earlier on. 
of that color. Picks up a massive brew of green here. Very lightly apply. That's a better matching tone for what I want. Yep. Okay, so pick that up. Very lightly drag it across. here and there in the foreground. Okay now I've got a lot of the picture in but what I'm going to do is stand back and have a look what I've got. This knife is going to pull that paint that way a bit and then pull it so. Taking a bit of paint off up to where the shadow is. Actually, I'll introduce a bit more there. The sun's just popped behind a cloud for now. That's alright. Gives us the variety so we can work with what we want. That's one bonus with the sun coming and going. You get the choice of where you want to put the shadows and the light. Before I go any further, I'll just start filling in that foreground a little bit more, get the, get the canvas more covered. Bring that paint down like so. beautiful play pan in this foreground so I do want to emphasize that so I'm going to bring the paint right down because it is such a nice clay pan it's a good part of the picture I think There we go, got a fly in the works. Forever. In tune. Okay, now where am I? Oh, that high level cloud really is coming in now. Alright, so. Grab this knife, clean it off. Just take a bit of paint off there. So bring this down a tad. Using the knife, pulling down. 
get a clean you can use a knife and take paint off to get a clean technique okay now taking a bit of paint off here also scraping back the blue that was underneath that shadow tone I put in first is scraping back to that because it's clarifying the edge up better. Almost like paint drawing with a palette knife. It's getting that stark edge. The outback has a really clarity of light and uh, putting real clean edges around hills is a classic way to get that feel they have. The outback tends to have very stark forms where the edge of the hill will really stand out cleanly against the sky and if you put that in like that it, uh, it really is convincing then it convinces your eye that you're looking at a stark outback form okay let's just have a look that blue I'll just go down a size in knife so I can get a little bit more hand control here like I said I'm just, I'm just trying to pull out a few trees on the edge of the hill there's some nice little trees running down where are we just there nice trees running down so don't want to get carried away you just suggest in a few spots that there's trees on the edge of the uh, hill there and then your mind should see them as being trees. Hang a sec, getting a bit of a mucky patch there. Let's just uh, intensify that. Right, let's have a look. up a bit of orange here. I just want to be, bring out with some really nice, uh, where are we, on top of this hill here, there's some beautiful rocky formations just running along here. And they're a stronger colour than the rest of the hill. So, just put a few in, they'll be a good accent, accent point. We can get to use a little bit more colour. That's a bit too much colour, I just noticed. So what I'll do is back it off a tiny bit. Add them in like so. There's some pure white in some of those rocks too, which will jump out nicely. Just very lightly touching. Don't get carried away here because you're just trying to catch the highlights of the rocks. Just trying to get the highlights. So it just picks up the uh, texture of the canvas and just looks like rocks, basically. Now what's actually happening here is that hill seems to be standing out quite proud by itself and because like I said before you've got the option when there's light and shadow on, an overcast, on a half overcast day you've got the option of light and shadow. What I might actually do is drop the foreground just before that hill into shadow which will really make, should make this hill pop better. Just putting a few of those highlights in. I'll go a darker tone, We're mixing with viridian green, burnt sienna, a bit of blue. Let's have a look here what we got. Let's put it through 
through like so to give the feeling of a shadow running across the landscape. slightly darker than that but I want it to be uh, dramatic so now grab uh, the piece of paper just want to clean up a few bits here like so make them simpler and more powerful Just going to stand back and have a look. Right, I'm going to take a little bit of paint off here. Thin that paint off. Take some paint off there too. It's all a matter of just feeling the landscape how you want it. Also working with what's there, but also getting the right energy that you want to compose the picture. Smudging and blending. up a bit more blue and magenta. Magenta and blue, half mix it with that green. Pull that through there, I want the energy there. Jutting it along like that to give a feeling of a few trees getting uh, a few trees in shadow. You've got the hill behind, which is in full light in my painting, and then you've got this foreground shadow in front of the hill. So I'm just highlighting some of those trees by uh, putting a dark shadow suggesting. A bit like so, just pop a few out like that. blue and magenta blue magenta and white more blue in that one just highlight that shadow there Ted just pull a few of these shadows out how you want them a bit more here the shadow okay, let's have a look Magenta, predominantly magenta there. Just want to fill this corner with a beautiful magenta.
Okay, coming along now. Just a couple more shadows here and there. Just got to feel the randomness of how you want it. Those shadows I'm using quite a cool colour and that's contrasting. The uh, warm orange gives us feeling of sunlight and shadow warm against cool. That always works well. Right, liking that, okay. Okay, I might just clear this area. I'm just going to do a little bit more sky work here. That sky's really coming in with overcast. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I started painting now because if I left it any later in the day, I don't think there'd be enough sunlight left to do a painting. Not a decent one anyway. Bit of cad yellow maybe with the white. Let's see what we've got here. Very lightly touching, pulling through. Get the feeling of the uh, high level cloud coming through. Got a feel that cloud as it comes in. You can there's quite a lot of swirls and action because there's a lot of wind up there. But what I like to do is kind of feel the cloud, the energy of the cloud as I'm painting it. through there. What have we got? Throw a bit of that colour in, a bit of the shadow tone of this. Make a bit of a shadow tone because it's getting a little thicker the clouds and that's good because what it does means I can keep down and put a bit of a shadow tone like so through there as it gets higher. It's good to work with an accent in anything like this. So I've got a pretty clean white with a tiny bit of yellow ochre. Sorry, it's not yellow ochre, it's cad yellow. Either one would work. More yellow in that mix. What I'm trying to do is create a feeling that this is where the central focal point is. Almost like the um, tent hill itself is erupting like a volcano and the clouds are becoming the, uh, the eruption. clarifying the edge of this hill here. Because that hill is the focal point, I'm just making the edges crisper. All right, so that'll about do it. That's real time. Everything you've seen is real time plein air painting. Now, what I'll do, 
pretty happy with the effect what's happened is because it's all gone into shadow I've got to work like I said with light and shadow I'm pretty happy with the fact that it has come in shadow because that's allowed me to strengthen up the hill itself by putting this middle ground into shadow and what that middle ground has done has popped the full lit hill made it jump out better it's also given me an opportunity to compose the picture with shadow on this side coming out into the light so you can feel the flow of the picture which the clouds are also emphasizing so basically there's a nice flow through the picture like that anyway i'll get the camera off and you can have a look now if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe Forward it on to your friends and spread the good word. All right, no worries. Thank you. She's gone into shadow now, Tent Hill, but when it was in light, that was more the effect we were getting.